score is New York five, Pittsburgh four. Seventh inning, Cleet Boyer takes a strike. Boyer popped the second and lined the second. Strike two. And Whitey Ford has gone down to the Yankee bullpen. There's a drive in the left center. Skinner chasing it and Burden and Burden makes the catch. One away in the seventh. And little Bobby Shan's coming up. The crowd uh, responds with some applause. There's Whitey Ford. Seventh inning, one away. Low outside, ball one. New York five, Pittsburgh four. It's the first of the seventh. Bobby Richardson on deck. A high foul to the left of the plate out of play. Pirates got two runs in the first, two in the second. The Yankees one in the fifth and four in the sixth. With homers by Scourin and Barra accounting for four of the runs driven in. Mandel single drove in the other. High ball two, two and one. Roy Face in relief of Vernon Law. 5 4 New York in the seventh inning. There's a bouncer over Hope's head down the left field line for a base hit. Bobby turns first and will hold up as Skinner whips a good throw back into Mazeroski. Bobby Shantz bounces a single over the drawn in Don Hope. And now coming to band is Bobby Richardson. Line to short, line to left, and single to center. One away. One on. Holding him on. It's low for a ball. Pirate bullpen busy. One of them is Bob Friend. One away. It's right over for a strike. One and one. Yankees five, Pirates four in the seventh inning. Final game of the 1960 World Series. Harvey Haddix is warming up along with Friend. A line drive and it is foul down the right field line. Into the Pirate bullpen. And you see Bob Friend, the right-hander, warming up. Chance walks slowly back to first base. Whitey Ford, who was warming up, sits down. A one-two count on Bobby in a tense ball game. The winner to be the world champion. 5-4 New York. One ball, two strikes. A high foul out of play off to the left of the plate. Smokey Burgess had a quick word with Roy Face. One out, a one two count on the bat. Chance on first. Richardson bounces it to Hope. And Four side at second on Bobby Chance. Hope to Mazeroski. I don't know whether Maz would have had a chance for a double play or not. It appears as if he skidded moving into the bag to take the throw. Two away in the seventh, and here's Tony Kubek, who popped to second, popped to short, and drew the walk that forced uh, the replacement of Law by face. Yankees five, Pirates four, seventh inning. Two down. 
inside ball one. Pirate bullpen busy. Faces the scheduled fourth batter in the last of the seventh. Holding Richardson close. Bobby bluffed to break toward second and had to hurry back. Two down. There's a line drive in the right field from Eddie there and Grant. Side is retired. One hit, no errors, one left on. And so at the end of six and a half innings, the score is New York five, Pittsburgh four. In the last half of the seventh inning, Smokey Burgess will lead off, Don Hoke on deck, and Bill Mazeroski to follow. Bobby Shantz, who came on the scene in the third inning, getting ready to work with Jim Coates and Ralph Terry throwing in the Yankee bullpen. Friend and Haddix warming up in the Pirate bullpen. Last half of the seventh inning, New York five, Pittsburgh four. Burgess singled in the second inning and grounded out the second in the fourth. Curveball is over. Strike one. Terry on your left, Coates on your right in the Yankee bullpen. Friend on your left and Haddix on your right in the Pirate bullpen. No balls, one strike. Smokey Burgess, the batter. Curveball is last in the center for a base hit. Burgess opens the seventh with a single to center. And Joe Christopher will go in to run for Burgess. Joe Christopher. From the Virgin Islands, he's a speed merchant. Don Hope steps up, walked and grounded a second. Inside, ball one with a fastball. Yankees five, Pirates four, last of the seventh. Scourin holding against Christopher. That almost hit him inside. Ball two, two and nothing. Don Hoke, the batter, taking a look down at third base coach Frank Osiak. Coates and Terry heating up. Brendan Haddix for Pittsburgh. Seventh inning, 5 4 New York. Christopher running for Burgess on first. Nobody out. And it's inside the ball three. Three nothing. Three balls, no strikes. Strike one, three and one. Joe Christopher running for Smokey Burgess. A 3 1 count on Don Hope. Nobody out. Last of the seventh. Five to four, New York. Final game of the World Series. It's foul tip, strike two. Full count now on Hope. Five foot six, Bobby Shantz. Pitching to Don Hope. 
Full count. Nobody out. Last of the seventh. New York five. Pittsburgh four. Christopher has a good lead off first. Bobby tossing easily over to the bag. Bill Mazeroski is on deck. Hoke asks for time. Granted by Bill Jukowski. Anything to rattle the pitcher. Three balls, two strikes. Nobody out. Christopher on first. There he goes, and the ball is lying in the left. Farrell moves over and grabs it, and Christopher has to turn and race back to first. Hope lines out to Barra in left. And now coming up is Bill Mazeroski. Beat out a bunt in the second inning. Hopped to short in the fourth. Casey studying the situation as Mazeroski comes up. And now Casey's going out to the mound. Boyer and Blanchard talking to Bobby Chance. Casey asking him how he's feeling, and now he's asking for Johnny Blanchard's uh, thoughts. Come on, man, over the clock. Casey started away and goes back. To stay with him. Five to four, New York, last of the seventh. Joe Christopher on first base, one out. Bill Mazeroski, the batter. Five to four, New York. There's a bouncer hit toward Kubek, over to Richardson, back on to Scowan. It's a double play, and the side is retired. The score is New York five and Pittsburgh four. You are watching this MLB Network special presentation. Game 7 of the 1960 World Series, brought to you with limited commercial interruptions by Chevrolet. Now to the top of the eighth. Maris fouled out the third, line to right, and fouled out the third. Roy Face pitching for Pittsburgh. A little dribbler, and Face grabs it nicely. One away. Up comes Mickey Mantle, who flied to right center, single to right, and single to center. Drove in one run and scored one. Joe DeMaestri goes down to the Yankee bullpen to loosen up, which might indicate his going in to play short and Kubek moving to left. Five to four, New York. It's the first half of the eighth inning. Inside, ball one. A line drive to short. Joe grabs it, and they're two away. And here comes Yogi Berra, who grounded to third, flied to right, and then hit a towering drive down the right field line for a three-run homer in the sixth inning. Stayed just inside the pole. Five to four, New York. High ball one. Tension riding on every pitch in this final game of the World Series. High and inside to a nothing. Yogi Berra who has a lot of World Series records to his credit and timely hit. Roy Face in his fourth appearance in this World Series has a count of two and nothing on Barra. The high pop foul to the right of the plate and out of play. A two one count. Yankees five, Pirates four, eighth inning.
Two away, nobody on. A 2 1 count on Barra. Foul ball down the first baseline, carrying off the field boxes into right field. This World Series is being brought to you in color exclusively on NBC TV. Two balls, next two outs. Foul back. Count remains 2 2. Yogi's three run homer tied him with Lou Gehrig for most uh, runs batted in in a World Series career, 35. Outside, ball three. Full count, three and two. Bill Scourin on deck. Two away, nobody on. Three balls, two strikes. Ball four, high and inside. Yogi Berra draws a walk. First given up by face. And that brings to the plate Bill Scourin, grounded to short, led off with a home run in the fifth inning, fouled out to third in the sixth. Yankees have seven hits, the Pirates five. Homers by Rocky Nelson, Bill Scourin, Yogi Berra. Two away. There's a high bouncer to Hope. They plays over to second base, safe. Hoke's only play as he went back for that high bouncer. And it is scored as a base hit for Scarron. That is his 12th series hit. Tying a World Series record for most hits in the series. Now coming up is John Blanchard. Blanchard. Hit to the box, fly to center, and grounded to first. Yankees five, Pirates four, eighth inning. Two away. Barra moves off second, Skyron off first. Outside, ball one. Yogi on second, Skyron on first. Eighth inning, 5-4 New York. On, Let's get this third one. Two men out. Roy Face pitching to Johnny Blanchard. The high foul out of playoff first base. And the count is one and one. Yogi eases back to second. Skyron on first. Moose uh, tied the record for most hits in a World Series. Billy Martin had 12 in 1953 in six games. Edgar Rice had 12. With Washington in 1925 and John Martin in 1931 with the Cardinals in seven games. Charlie Herzog and Joe Jackson did the same in eight games. There's a line drive and it's into right center field for a base hit. Barrett turns third, comes in to score. Blanchard, round second, heads for third as the ball was bobbled momentarily by Clemente. Johnny Blanchard singles to right center, putting the Yankees ahead six to four, scoring Barrett. Sending Scour into third and bringing up Cleet Boyer, who popped to second, lined to second, and flying to left center. Bob Friend gets up to throw again for Pittsburgh. Come on, Elroy, let's get out of there. Two out in the eighth. There's a line drive down the left field line, and it is a fair ball. Scourin scores. Blanchard round second, heads for third. He holds up there as the relay comes on into the plate. Skinner to Hoke in to Smith. It's a double for Cleet Boyer to left field. Driving in Bill Scourin with a second run in the inning, and it is seven to four New York. 
And the batter now is Bobby Shantz. Who popped out in the fifth inning to first and single to left in the seventh. With two outs, the Yankees have rallied for two in the eighth inning and lead seven to four. Runners on second and third, two away. Outside, ball one. Johnny Blanchard on third. Cleet Boyer on second. Two men out. It's in there for a strike, one and one. Pace came in to relieve Law in the sixth inning. The high pop up off to the right of the plate, foul, and it is out of play. In behind the Pirate dugout. Johnny Blanchard returning to third, Fleet Boyer to second. Six hits off base. The Yankees have had ten all together. One ball, one strike. Two down in the eighth inning. Two runs in. Seven to four, New York. Outside. Two two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Two in, two on. Final game of the World Series at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. Blanchard leads off third, Boyer off second, and Chance hits a bouncer, and it is a foul ball over the head of Don Hope. Bobby often chops the ball like that. It went foul. Would have sent two men home otherwise. Blanchard returning to third, Boyer to second. Frank Prosetti chirping down there at third base. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Blanchard leads off third, Boyer off second. Bobby Shantz takes it low outside, ball three, blocked by Hal Smith. Bobby Richardson on deck. Full count on Shantz. Blanchard leads off third, Boyer off second. Two away, and Bobby Shantz hits a foul down the first baseline, which Ralph Houck knocks down. Two runs in in the eighth inning, New York seven, Pittsburgh four. Blanchard moves off third, Boyer off second, two away. 3-2 count on Chance, and he hits a liner in the right center. Clemente goes over and grabs it. The sides retired. Two runs, three hits, no errors, two left on. And so at the end of seven and a half innings, the score is New York seven, Pittsburgh four. Gino Simoli will bat for Roy Face. Bill Burden on deck and Dick Droke to follow. For you late viewers, the Pirates scored two runs in each of the first two innings. The Yankees picked up one in the fifth, four in the sixth, and two in the eighth. Yankees seven, Pirates four, eighth inning. Terry and Coates in the Yankee bullpen. Bob Friend loosening up for Pittsburgh, along with Harvey Haddix. Gino Simoli's had four for 19 in the series. Batting for Roy Face. Strike one, slow curve. Last of the eighth. High ball one, one and one. One ball, one strike. Screw ball over, strike two, one and two. Bobby Shands came on in the third inning and has pitched magnificently in relief. 
Turley and Stafford being the first two Yankee pitchers. Turley being charged with three runs and Stafford won. Seven to four New York last of the eighth in the final game of the World Series. Gino Simoli batting for Roy Fates. A count of one ball two strikes. Curb is fouled back out of play. Count remains one and two. This is the 57th World Series and the 17th to be decided in seven games. High fastball, 2 2 count. The outfield shading Samoli a little toward right and center and right. Barra just a touch toward left center. Pirate fans start that rhythmic hand clapping. Curve is looped into right field and it drops for a base hit. And Samoli opens the eighth with a pinch hit, single to right. Second hit given up by Bobby Chance. Here's Bill Burden. Fly to left, single to right to drive in two runs and grounded to second. It's in there, strike one. There's the ground ball hit to short. Knocked and it hits Kubek in the face and all hands are safe. The ball took a hard hop. A double play ball bounced up and hit him in the face. All hands safe. And Bobby Richardson goes over quickly. Now Johnny Blanchard comes out. Trainers uh, Joe Soares and Gus Mouch. And now Casey Stengel runs out. Cleet Borea moves on to the scene. Bobby Shantz got him to come up with what appeared to be the double play ball. It took the hop and hit Kubek in the face. I don't know whether it hit him in the Adam's apple around the chin or just where. Casey at the moment's blocking uh, your view and mine. And he signals over to the Yankee bullpen, I believe, for Joe DeMastri. Tony's getting up. Joe DeMastri just to the left of Kubek. Tony wants to stay in. In case he wants to make sure. Mickey Mantle comes in facing you. Tony doesn't want to go out. He's trying to convince Casey that he's all right. And Casey says, look, if you're not, let's not be a hero in that sense. Casey says, I've got somebody to take over. And so Tony Kubek is leaving. Tony Kubek, who's had a great uh, series. He had 10 hits in the series. Bill Burton is credited with the single. 
and uh, the bad hop now has given the Pirates a new lease on life with two on and uh, nobody out. When it appeared for a moment as if there would be two out and nobody on. And Joe DeMaestri will go in to play short. Gino Simoli is on second, Bill Burton on first, and the batter is Dick Grote. Bob Skinner on deck and Rocky Nelson to follow. New York seven, Pittsburgh four in the last of the eighth. Nobody out. Tying run at the plate. Grote popped to short, grounded to third, line to the box. Curveball over, strike one. Blanchard goes out saving to Bobby Chance. Terry and Coates continue to warm up for New York. Simoli leads off second, Burton off first. Inside, ball one, one and one. The last half of the eighth inning. Pirates get the first two men aboard. Yankees seven, Pittsburgh four. There's a shot to left field for a base hit. Simoli rounds third, comes in to score. The throw into third, and Burton stops at second, and it's seven to five. And Casey Stengel is out of the dugout as Dick Grote comes up with his sixth hit. And his second run batted in. It's seven to five, nobody out. Bobby Chance, victimized by the band hop. Will now depart. And Jim Coates will be coming in. Burden on second, Grote on first. Skinner walked, grounded to first, line to right. Nelson on deck, Clemente to follow. The ball is bunted toward third. Boyer plays it to Scourin for the sacrifice, moving the tying runs in the scoring position. Burden to third and Grote to second. And the batter is Rocky Nelson, who belted a two-run homer in the first inning, walked in the third and grounded to first in the sixth. It's the last of the eighth inning. The Pirates have the tying runs in scoring position. Final game of the World Series. Burton on third, Grote on second, one out. Jim Coates in relief of Bobby Shantz. Inside and low, almost a wild pitch. Ball one. Louis Arroyo gets up to throw along with Ralph Terry now for New York. Burden on third, Grote on second. Pirates lashing back here in the eighth inning. Runners lead away from second and third. Rocky Nelson swings and lifts a high fly ball into short right. Burden tags and holds up as the throw comes all the way in perfectly to Blanchard. Nelson flies to Maris with no advance. And now the batter is Roberto Clemente. Popped the second, grounded the second in a double play and hit to the box. Hal Smith on deck. Two away in the last of the eighth. New York seven, Pittsburgh five. On third and Grote on second and Clemente at bat. And Jim Coates in relief of Bobby Chance. Coates the fourth Yankee pitcher following Turley and Stafford and Chance. The boy from Village Virginia with runners on second and third. Clemente fouls it to the right of the plate out of play strike one.
Now Casey runs out of the dugout to talk to Coach. now in the last of the eighth. One run in for Pittsburgh. Yankees leading seven to five. Burden on third. Grote on second. Roberto Clemente at bat. Outfield deep straight away. No balls. One strike. Burden leads off third. Grote off second. Two outs. Roberto Clemente lifts a foul out of play to the right of the plate up onto the roof. Strike two. Nothing in two. Burden returning to third, Grote to second. In this peak moment in World Series drama, there is no tomorrow. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Burden leads off third, Grote off second. New York seven, Pittsburgh five. Bob Clemente hits a little dribbler foul and to hit it off the handle and cracked his bat. Bat boy brought out a couple, but Clemente wants still another. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Burden on third, Grote on second. Seven to five, New York. Clemente takes it low outside. Ball one, one and two. Hearts race and pulses pound here in this last half of the eighth inning, the final game of the World Series. Burden moves off third, Grote off second. One ball, two shots, seven to five, New York. Runners widen their leads. And Clemente hits a soft dribbler towards Scourin, and nobody's going to get over. Base is loaded. Check that. One run came in on the play. Burden came on from third. Grote went to third. It is seven now to six. With runners on first and third, as Clemente beat out a slow bouncer to Scourin. And here's Hal Smith coming up. Bill Burden scored. Grote went to third. Hal Smith steps in. He singled in the seventh. It's in there for a strike. Dick Grote on third. Clemente on first. High for a ball, one and one. Clemente beating out the roller to Scourin. Scoring Burden. Grote moves to third. He took a good cut. Christopher went in to run for Burgess, who had singled in the seventh inning. Burgess started the game and had two for three. Tying run on third. Lamenti on first. Two away. Hal Smith. He started a swing and held off. Two two. Dick Grote on third base. Bob Clemente on first base. Two runs in. Seven to six, New York. Two balls, two strikes. And Hal Smith hits a drive to deep left field. The ball is way back out there. Going, going, going.
and breaks loose at Forbes Field. The fans go wild in Pittsburgh as Hal Smith slams a long drive, 425 feet over the left field wall, scoring Grote and Clemente ahead of him. Five runs in, and it is nine to seven in favor of Pittsburgh. And Ralph Terry is coming in to replace Jim Cope. Coach pitched two thirds of an inning, giving up two hits. A three run homer by Hal Smith, and they are going wild here at Forbes Field as the Pirates have come from behind. They led four to nothing at the end of two, four to one, end of five, trailed five to four at the end of six, and seven to four at the end of seven and a half. And Hal Smith comes through with a dramatic two out three run homer off Jim Coates and the Pirates are out in front nine to seven. Three runs in this inning charged to Chance and two to Coates. And so Jim Coates is the pitcher of record. One of the most dramatic base hits in the history of the World Series. In the inning, Simoli opened with a single. Burdens, bouncer to short, hit Kubek in the face, and Grote single in a run. A sacrifice put runners on second and third. A fly ball kept the runners there. Clemente beat out an infield hit to get the second run home in the inning. And Hal Smith, who had taken over for Burgess after Christopher had run for Burgess in the seventh, belts one of the most dramatic home runs ever hit in a World Series. This one is for the money, and it's nine to seven in favor of Pittsburgh. Now here's Don Hope with Ralph Terry coming in to relieve Jim Coates. Outside, ball one. That base hit will long be remembered. A curveball over for a strike. Hal Smith, born in West Frankfort, Illinois, lives in Livonia, Michigan, and at one time was Yankee property. Traded to Baltimore, to Kansas City, and then to Pittsburgh. There's another fly ball in the left field. Barra moving under it, and the side is retired. Five runs in, and it is nine to seven in favor of Pittsburgh. Okay, Hal Smith, you got to be thinking that's your only at bat of the game because you play Smokey Burgess. In about three more outs, I'm going to be a household name. <laughs> My picture's going to be on the front page, forget about the Courier and the Post Gazette, of every newspaper in America, right? I guess. <laughs> I really didn't think about it a lot. I, I did after, I really didn't know what happened until I ran second base. When I went around second base and I looked up in the stands and people were on the, on the dugouts and doing it, and I said, what the heck have I done? <laughs> and I get home and Dick Grote and Clemente both lift me up in the air and I was absolutely overwhelmed. And I thought, <laughs> I thought that no matter what happened, I had really helped in a World Series and had been my lifelong dream. <laughs> not often that a note pays dividend, dividends half a century later, but they stood for you again 50 years later. No, they're great. <laughs> they're great people.
Dick, one of the things that I noticed in being around you guys last night um, at dinner, you guys stayed together for a long time as a team. Players didn't move around as much as they tend to today. Bonds were formed that still endure 50 years later. Absolutely, no doubt about it. We've been together three or four times this summer, and it's like we've never been apart. The 50 years went by, having gone through the pennant race in 58, and then again in 60, you develop bonds and a closeness and a friendship that never goes away the rest of our lives. And thank God I played with all these guys. They were really special. Bill, you uh, were saying last night how often this pirate team came from behind. So you'd led 4 nothing. Now you're down 7-4, going to the bottom of the eighth. But a couple dozen times during the course of a pennant winning season, it seemed that you guys came back. There was a game against the Reds in April. You're down 5 nothing in the bottom of the ninth and get six runs at Forbes Field to win the game 6-5. to five. So you guys were used to getting up off the deck. It wasn't just a couple dozen. It was about 30 to 35 times. <laughs> And we came from behind in the eighth and ninth inning. I mean, we never gave up. And after this happened several times, you just keep thinking it's going to happen. And it did. Now, Bobby, a couple of things had to happen and go against the Yankees to set the stage for the Hal Smith home run. First of all, looked like an easy double play ball that Bill hit. It was a sharply hit ball, but it was right at Tony Kubek. And then it takes a wicked hop. We're going to take a look at it again. Tell me about the play. And then first, you could see that you were very concerned. Tony was your roommate and your double play partner, and he seemed to be seriously hurt. Here it is. Well, the ball really was hit hard, and that was why we had a chance for a double play, because <laughs> With Bill's speed, we still could have gotten him with a ball hit that hard. But the reason that they took Tony out, he couldn't catch his breath. He couldn't breathe, and that Stingle would like for him to stay, and Tony wanted to stay, but he couldn't catch his breath, and he had to go inside. And they put him in the hospital. Uh, Dick went to see him a couple days later and uh, visited Tony in the hospital. But that was a turning point, and one other play there when... When Coach didn't cover when first. When Coach didn't cover first base. And, uh, On the ball Clemente hit. Yeah. Two outs. <laughs> now, a bad hop is one thing, and I guess there's a statute of limitations on any kind of crime, but even 50 years later, I sense a gnashing of teeth. You know, bad hop isn't a guy's fault, but when a pitcher doesn't cover first on a bouncing ball to first, that's just not right. <laughs> They work on that a lot in spring training, isn't that right? <laughs> <laughs> but I've got to be honest, when I looked at it, he was going for the ball. And uh, if somehow Scourin could have realized that, I could have fielded the play and made it to Scourin. But it was one of those plays that just, it just happened. Kind of in between? In between. That's exactly right. So, so, may, so maybe we're being too hard on, I think so. on Jim Coates. Bill. Comeback is the better thing. Talk about that play. The bad hop, when I hit it, I said, oh, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not in those words, but <laughs> it was an automatic double play if it hadn't taken a bad hop. It now, is hard. Casey had Whitey Ford warming up. Now, he had pitched a complete game shutout the day before, but he did get up. We saw him briefly in the bullpen. Why didn't Casey use Whitey in that eighth inning, at least for a few batters? Good question. <laughs> I don't know. What, do you recall anything that Casey said? We saw him out there, he goes to the mound. It looks like he's more exhorting the pitcher than he is, you know, dealing in any specific strategy. I'm not sure it was about baseball, but it <laughs> might have been double top. All right, so. <laughs> what, what did you say, what was the conversation like with Kubek when you eventually visited him in the hospital. Well, ironically, I've talked to Tony many, many times, Bobby, because we played the Yankees in spring quite often. But I always had a uniform on and a hat. <laughs> I went up to the hospital. I had to have my wrist x-rayed the next day after the seventh game. 
And I said, I'll go up and see how Tony Kubek's doing. I walked in the room and he looked at me like, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> and I said, Tony, I've always had a hat on. Maybe you didn't realize I'm bald. I'm Dick Grote. He, he said, oh my God. He said, I'm, and then I just checked on him. He was doing fine. He was going to go home very shortly after that. But he had no idea who I was when I walked in the room. All right, so. The Pirates have taken a 9-7 lead, going to the top of the ninth inning. But this game is not exactly over. Back to Mel Allen. And it is 9-7 in favor of Pittsburgh. Bob Friend comes in. He made two starts. This is his first relief appearance. And the batter is Bobby Richardson, one for four. Strike one. And the crowd will roar now with every strike and with every put out. Pittsburgh fans have waited 33 years for this. There's a looper in to left field, and it drops in there for a base hit. Bobby Richardson on with a single to left to open the ninth inning for New York. Bobby's 11th hit in the series. And Dale Long is coming out to hit. In place of Joe DeMaestri, who had gone in to uh, replace Kubek, who was hit in the face by the bouncer. Whitey Ford starts to loosen up in the Yankee bullpen. The Pirates open up the bad bounce that uh, got Kubek out of the game into five runs to take the lead. Nine to seven here in the ninth inning. Day along. Batting for Joe DeMaestri. They foul off to the left of the plate. Strike one. Long is nothing for two in the series. Pittsburgh nine, New York seven. Ninth inning, final game. Richardson on first. High ball one, one and one. Mizell warming up in the pirate bullpen. There's a line drive to right field for a base hit. Bobby Richardson holds at second base as Clemente gets off a tremendous throw. And out of the dugout comes Danny Murtaugh. Dale Long pinch hits a single to right. And the Yankees are fighting back here in the first of the ninth, trailing 9 to 7 in the final game of the World Series. And with Roger Maris due up, Danny Murtaugh signals for a left hander. He's had two men warming up, and I believe it'll be. Uh, Harvey Haddix, who had been warming up with Mizell. Harvey Haddix coming in to pitch now for Pittsburgh in the ninth. Haddix worked game five. That was at Yankee Stadium, a game which the Pirates won by a score of five to two. Bob Friend departs. Low by one. Richardson on second, Long on first. Looks a pop up. Foul. Hal Smith is under it. Wally. This really is exciting. It really is. Now coming up is Mickey Mantle, who flied to right center, single to right, single to center, and lined to short. Two for four, one run batted in. 
Yogi Berra on deck. Pittsburgh leading 9 to 7 in the ninth inning of the final game. Harvey Haddix coming in to relieve Bob Friend. It's been Law and Face and Friend and Haddix. Richardson on second. Long on first and one away. Ball one low outside. Outfield deep straight away. George Witt loosening up in the Pirate bullpen. Richardson on second long on first one away. There's a line drive in the right center field for a base hit. Richardson will score along around second and goes on into third. And it's nine to eight as Mantle comes through with his third hit. And second run batted in the game. And it's nine to eight with Yogi Berra coming up. Eleven runs batted in this series by Mantle. And Yogi Berra coming up with Dale Long on third base. Mantle on first, one out in the ninth. Pirates nine, the Yankees eight. One out. Ball one outside. Harvey Haddix trying to keep that ball low on Yogi. And now Casey calls time and will send in a runner for a day along. It'll be Gil McDougal. For New York, number 12, Gil McDougal, running for Dale Long. Gil McDougal. Pittsburgh 9, New York 8. On, Ninth Let's inning. Wow. McDougal on third, Mantle on first, Barrett back. One ball, no strikes. One out. Final game of the World Series. Runners lead away from first and third. Outside, ball two, two and nothing. Army Haddock's working carefully. McDougal on third, running for long. Mantle on first. Pirates leading 9-8. One out in the ninth inning. And there's a shot grabbed by Nelson. Steps on first and Randall gets back to first. He's safe and McDougal scores the tying run on an amazing turn of events. On a hard shot by Barra. Nelson grabbed the ball, stepped on first and Mantle with quick thinking, stopped in his tracks, slid underneath the tag, got back to first as McDougal scored the tying run. How about that? And so what appeared to be the game ending double play results in the tying run and four runs batted in in the game for Barra. Mantle on first two outs and the batter is Bill Scarron. Yogi sets a new World Series record. 36 RBIs total series. Low ball one. And so the bad hop bouncer that hit Kubek and helped lead the way for a five for Pittsburgh is countered by an oddity at first base. Two away. There's the bouncer hit to short. And the force at second on Mantle. For New York, two runs, three hits, no errors. And so at the end of eight and a half innings, the score is New York nine, Pittsburgh nine. Okay, so this game has just about everything. And now we have this play at first base. And there's no replay. You don't get a second angle. We're going to show it again in slow motion in a minute. You don't get a second angle, though, or a different angle. There is no analyst. Mel Allen is working alone. And so there's nobody, Bobby, to question 
what Mickey did. It worked because he dived back in successfully. His athleticism paid off. He gets in ahead of the tag. McDougald scores. But if he just gets in a rundown, right. McDougal's going to score for sure. What was he thinking? Well, you visited with Tony this weekend, and I called, and we talked on the phone, and Tony said that Mickey called him in the hospital right about the time you went to see him just to check on him. And Tony asked him about the play, and he said, I just froze. He said, uh, I, I just didn't know what to do. But his instincts, as you mentioned, kicked in, and he made that wonderful dive back in. The proper thing would be to get halfway and just give the third, third base runner time to score. But Mickey just, just froze, but he made a great slide, and the tag was not there. So we tied it up. Let's, let's watch it again. If he's tagged out, the ball had been hit so sharply, and Nelson steps on first so quickly, no way McDougal is across home plate before he would have been tagged out. The game would have been over. One more look. I mean, it's an amazing bit of business here, but... <laughs> what, what are you thinking, Dick? Well, I don't... All I know is I, I'm covering second base, and the ball didn't come to me. <laughs> <laughs> and even that's the strangest angle we've seen any of it yeah. before. That the the ball was hit so hard, and Rocky made a magnificent play, took him right to the bag, and it just from that point on, I don't know what Mickey was thinking about, but he sure worked out well for him. <laughs> Bill, from your vantage point. What are you thinking from center field? I thought possibly that Mick thought that he caught it in the air. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's and it would be forced out. Mm -hmm. right. And then when it turned out that he hit, didn't catch it in the air, he, and then because Mick is so agile, he just beat the. Yeah. He beat us at our own game on that one. So here we are, nine to nine. One thing <laughs> I'd like to point out, though, I said, Bobby, that this game and this World Series had had just about everything. But there was one thing with to this point 18 runs scored one thing this game did not have you go ahead nobody struck out in this ball game yeah nobody yeah. Okay. not a single strikeout in right. the entire game all right so here we are it's 9-9 <laughs> and we're back for the fateful bottom of the ninth right after this i was just sitting there and uh, thinking about how in the world we're going to beat these guys and what's going to happen here. And somebody yelled, you're up. I forgot I was up. And somebody yelled, you're up. So I, that's when I went and got my helmet and went up and hit. We are back and just about set to throw it back 50 years. Bottom of the ninth. The Yankees have come back again to tie it 9-9. Bill Mazeroski is the leadoff man in the last half of the ninth at Forbes Field, October 13th, 1960. Ralph Terry on the mound for the Yankees. Mel Allen at the mic. <laughs> Ralph Terry on the mound. Sudden death now, last of the ninth. Nine to nine. Ball one outside. Just get on, Billy. Just get on. Over here, out. Johnny Blanchard and Ralph Terry having a little discussion.
Bill Mazeroski leading off in the last of the ninth. Hits his second homer of this World Series. And in a final game that was dominated by homers, Hal Smith's three-run explosion in the eighth, Mazeroski in the ninth, Rocky Nelson in the first, Scarrett in the fifth, and a three-run homer by Barra in the sixth. And the Pittsburgh Pirates are acclaimed the champions of the world. And the final score, the Pirates, 10 runs, 11 hits, no errors. The Yankees, 9 runs, 13 hits, 1 error. All right. Now you've seen the whole game, Bill, every pitch of the game, 50 years later. Your thoughts? I'm glad I was there. <laughs> <laughs> No, that was, that was just typical of our whole 1960 year. That's the way our year went. Everything went our way. Bobby, as the game moved to the bottom of the eighth and into the top of the ninth, I heard you lean over and say to Dick Grote, boy, this is exciting. <laughs> it, it really was exciting. And I, my thoughts were, well, let's hold them so we'll have a chance to score in the tenth. It didn't work out that way. And Yogi said he thought it was going to hit off the ivy. He was ready to play the carom, but it went over the wall. Yeah. Afterwards, in the Yankee clubhouse, Mantle was in tears. Was. Because he felt, with no disrespect intended, that the Yankees were the better team, and he just couldn't believe that they had lost. But they really came back. Every time they were behind, they came back. It was a good year for Pittsburgh. Dick, it's one thing... <laughs> yeah. It's one thing... It's one thing to win the World Series. That's great enough. On top of it, bottom of the ninth in this improbable fashion. But you beat the Yankees. That takes it to a different place. No doubt about it. This was, there's no question the Yankee organization was the finest organization in all of baseball. They just dominated the American League. And even in spring training, when we play another American League team, they were going to spring training to see who was going to finish second because they just conceded the Yankees were stronger. And to beat the Yankees makes it something special. I mean, there's a guy standing out there that made a great catch. He knows what it's like to win a special game. Am I right, Franco? <laughs> but it's not fair for Dick to say that, because in 64, four years later, with the Cardinals, he beat the Yankees again. Oh, that's right. You were the shortstop for the Cardinals when they beat the Yankees in 7 and 64. That made it double the best <laughs> thing in the world. When you beat the best, it's something special. And again, this was, as Bill Mazeroski and Bill Burden and I have said numerous times when we've been together, the 1960 Pirates were a team of destiny. Everything seemed to fall in place for us. We were just supposed to win, and ironically, watching the films of this game, we've seen the earlier highlights. I was never conscious playing there all those years. How awful that infield looked, but it sure paid <laughs> off. <didn't it? laughs> Folks, we thank all of you, all of you fans for being here, all of our special guests for being here. As we close things out, we're going to roll the post-game show, which is illuminating and entertaining in its own way, if only for Bob Prince's sport coat. Um, <laughs> and, and it will begin with Bob Prince uh, interviewing Warren Giles, who was then the president of the National League. But don't roll it just yet. Before we leave the Bynum Theater, once more, all of you former Pirates, stand up. These are your world champion Pittsburgh Pirates of 1960. what teamwork and guts and determination can do because the Pirates have shown that all year. And they beat a great Yankee ball club, a great Yankee ball club. No question about it. Thank you very much, President Okay, Warren well, Giles. congratulations to you because I know how you were playing. Oh, man, I was. Hey, Hal Smith, come up here a minute, Hal. Come up here on television, coast to coast. And uh, Hal, on TV a minute. 
Wait a minute. I want him on my TV. We're fighting photographers, Hal. A great home run you hit. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going coast to coast. The folks want to get a good look at you. And it was a long, day. wonderful day. Boy, it was a huh? wonderful day. And of course, Woo! I never thought we'd come back like we did, but come back we did, huh? We come back just like we always did all year, didn't we? That's right, Hal. Thank you. Here's Bill Mazeroski. Oh, Cut the game winning blow. Hey, wasn't that something, Billy? Oh, I can't even talk. I'm too tired. <laughs> What'd you do? You didn't have to run very far, did you, boy? Well, what was the what was what was the pitch you hit, Bill? It was a high fastball. A high fastball. That did it. And the Pirates are the world's champions for the first time since 25. Joe Brown and Don Hook. Here's our general manager, Joe Brown. Don Hook, one of the seen coast to coast. Tiger, a tremendous victory. Uh, Bob, this is one of the greatest team efforts I've ever seen. I'll tell you that. And I'm awful proud to be a part of it. Well, I know that they're all proud to have you there. And Joe Brown, what a great, great job you did as general manager of this fine the championship. Guys around you here did it, Bob. Yeah. God Almighty, it was just wonderful. Uh, I think it was just sheer guts against power, and the guts, the guts came through. This is, uh, I, I'm speechless. I know, I know you are. I know how you feel. Here's Tom Johnson, Dick Groth. We're going coast to coast, Dick. I know you're real happy. Oh, about I that. feel wonderful, Bob. This is the greatest ball club in the world. World's champion, Dick Groth. How's it sound? Wonderful. It's the greatest feeling in the world to be the world champion. They thought we were dead, but we bounced back, didn't we, Bob? Yes, you did. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Dick Groth. Let me get Vern Law over here. I want to have Bern Law come over. Tom Johnson, yep. I've got my scorecards. Well, this we is had them all the way, didn't we? It was real easy. This is Tom Johnson, the vice president of the Pittsburgh Ball Club. Tom, I know how happy you are. Oh, you can see that, Bob. This is a great ball club, and everyone's done a marvelous job. Well, oh, yeah, and it's great to bring a championship of the world to Pittsburgh. Well, it certainly is, and here's a guy that pitched his heart out, went as far as his left leg would go, Bern Law, Deacon. I know you were disappointed, but you're happy that you're with a winner. You're not kidding, Bob. I'm feeling great right now. You betcha. Well, I want to congratulate you on your two great victories and the way you hung in there and never cried a bit about that left ankle. I know okay. about it. That's fine, Bob. Thank you. Burn Law, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Billy Burden, our fleet-footed center fielder. Wasn't that a dandy, Billy? That was the best, Bob. I don't think there's ever been a better one. Well, I don't know if there has been either. I'm glad that we're not getting ourselves thrown apart. Here's our winning pitcher, Harvey Haddix. Harvey? You made it too in this World Series, big boy. Oh, it's wonderful. I've never had anything more wonderful happen to me. Well, I know you, you have me, it. Bob. Thank you. And here's How sweet it is, Bob. Yeah, here's, here's, here's our little round. Little, 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 little Spanky Burgess. That's the two base hits today, and they were big ones. Smoke, yes, nice so Well, it's a great thrill, Bob. A big thrill. Yes. Great hit. We'll see you back next okay. year, huh? What do you say, Gunner? Well, Dog, how are you? Bob Skinner, our left fielder, finally got back in action. How's that thumb? Fine, fine. They had to get the dog in there to win, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that world championship changed the hands real quick, didn't it? It sure did. It's all healed now. All right, Bob, thank you. Good luck to you. Best of luck. And here's Roy Face, who made four great appearances in the World Series and had the misfortune to see one go out against him by Yogi Berra. But, uh, Roy, if you didn't mind that, as long as we won. That's right. As long as the team wins, don't make a difference what happens to me. I'm, I'm happy the team won. And beat Gino? the Bucks, can't beat the Bucks, can they? No, sir, can't beat the Red Buffaloes, I'll tell you that. That's this is Gino Simoli. Yes, sir, yes, yeah. sir. Uh, we got them, we got them. They broke all the records and we won the game. How about that? <laughs> There's a good one. Broke right. all the records and we won we the won game. We won the game, right here. Yeah, that's it. And I'll just say thank you to everybody. I hope you fans have enjoyed hearing from these very happy world champion Pittsburgh Pirates. There's a drive into deep blue field. When I hit it, I didn't know for sure if it was going out. I didn't know, you know, it's 410 feet out there. And I hit it good. And I knew, I knew when I hit it that Yogi wasn't going to catch it. But I didn't know if it was going out or not. I heard the noise of people yelling. I looked down the left field line, and the umpire's giving it this shot. And then I hit second, and I don't think I touched first, or touched the ground the rest of the way home. I just floated home. <laughs> All I could think about is, we beat the Yankees, we beat the Yankees, we beat the great Yankees. Yes, they did, in a series, a game, and with a single swing that still resonate 50 years later. Thanks for joining us for this special presentation of Game 7 of the 1960 World Series. Good night, everybody.